Hello everyone, I'm Izzy Wells and welcome to Hot Stuff, where we discuss hot topics that we think deserve your attention. From social issues to popular culture, we'll be letting you into what's going on in Taiwan driven by real people and stories. Today's guest on Hot Stuff is Tiffany Chang. Tiffany is not only an undergraduate student at Stanford University studying engineering and data science, but was also crowned Miss Taiwanese American 2022. Today, we will be discussing Tiffany's experience competing in the pageant and what it's like being an ambassador for the Taiwanese American community. Welcome to Hot Stuff, Tiffany. Thank you so much for having me. So excited to be here. So let's talk about uh, Miss Taiwanese American pageant. Mm -hmm. What actually is it? Yeah, so Miss Taiwanese American Pageant is a is hosted by Taiwan Center of Greater Los Angeles, and it's a beauty pageant that you know focuses a lot on like empowering women and showcasing you know like women's leadership basically, and also bringing together the Taiwanese American community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, I I know I read something about how because you also have this background in kind of like STEM, right? And that's also something that you're interested in about encouraging more women right. in STEM. So exactly. it, and it gives you I guess a great platform to kind of do more of this kind of advocacy work. Yeah, yeah, I'm really glad because I've been able like through this platform I'm really been able I feel like to connect more to like the Taiwanese American community Mm. and also you know through the pageant you know you meet a lot of like sisters um, and so that's also been like a really nice experience. Amazing and how does the uh, Taiwanese American pageant compare to other American pageants like some I assume a lot of our listeners aren't too sure you know what what a pageant actually involves and I I, I myself aren't I'm not too sure, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but yeah. What, what? How does it differ from traditional uh, American beauty pageants? Yeah, so I know like the big stereotype of like beauty pageants is that you know in a lot of ways it like objectifies like women, but you know my experience in Miss Taiwanese American was actually like completely the opposite. For Miss Taiwanese American pageant, I know the categories are actually very different from American pageants, I feel like, or like traditional American pageants. Mm-hmm. We don't have like a swimsuit like category. Instead, we have, you know, self-introduction, talent show, Q&A, and then like dance. Um, and so it's more focused, I feel like, on actually showcasing women's like intelligence um, making ourselves, making us really advocate for ourselves and why we, you know, deserve this position. Yeah, well, that's that's great. I guess it's kind of breaking those old stereotypes yeah. in some ways. And and like you said, it is held by the Taiwan Center of Greater Los Angeles. Why do you think they thought it was important to hold a competition like this? I think it was mainly because, well, and I know in Los Angeles, there's a greater like Taiwanese, like American community. And so, but then, of course, at the same time, you know, we're still very much of like a minority, still struggling to, you know, make our voices heard. And so I think they thought it was important to host, you know, a competition like that sort of to bring us together and also make the younger generation aware of why it's so important to, you know, speak up speak out for ourselves mm. and had you ever competed in a beauty pageant before no i had not yeah. this was my first one how did you how did you where did you see it um i assume you had to like go through this like audition process and mm-hmm. stuff how did you find out about it yeah so i actually first found out about it, found out about it from my like parents they just casually mentioned it to, to me um like one night like during dinner and then yeah. i myself i started to do like more research into it and it was that transition period right before i went to college and so before i was of course very like academically like driven (laughs) so over the summers i would be doing like research and stuff like that but this was the one summer where i had like a little bit more time on my hands Mm -hmm. and this was a completely different experience from you know what i've done before so i thought you know why not (laughs) and were there other you know other retail like kind of using your summer that you you had suddenly have more time on your hands what were kind of any other reasons that you were like okay yeah this this is something that I would really be interested in doing yeah so also um of course I've you know I grew up in like a Taiwanese like family I'm very close to my grandma I you know, speak Taiwanese with her like daily um but and I you know growing up I always heard my um my dad always like he repeatedly would say like I love Taiwan blah blah <laughs> and 
even though, you know, that was like being Taiwanese was like a huge part of my life, I feel like before I didn't really understand what it meant. Mm. Um, in school, we're not taught Taiwanese culture, we're not taught Taiwanese history. And so I feel like part of me was still, you know, I still didn't really understand what it meant to be Taiwanese, um, not even like Taiwanese American. And so um, a part of me also wanted to, you know, learn more about my culture. Mm. And interesting, you said there that you speak Taiwanese with your grandma, because mm-hmm. uh, Taiwanese, a lot more young people don't really speak Taiwanese anymore. Yeah. So how is this something that you've like managed to keep up? Um, well, I grew up actually with my grandma. Mm. Um, like every day after school, I would you know go to her house, eat dinner with her, and you know, I speak Taiwanese with her. So naturally growing up, mm. um, that was how I like you know, manage to communicate, yeah, with, communicate her. with her. Mm. And are there other, a lot of other Taiwanese speaking people in like your community back in the US? There's actually surprisingly like a pretty big like really? Taiwanese like population. Yeah. yeah. But in terms of sorry, like the actual like Taiwanese language as opposed to Mandarin. Oh no, not a lot of people. Right. Like, there are very few people. Yeah. Who speak yeah. Taiwanese. Yeah. yeah. Cause yeah. no, most, I feel like most like younger friends that I have here, um, it's like rare if they do speak Taiwanese, yeah. but they're almost, I mean, it will get more onto these um, kind of issues about like identity and stuff but some of them feel almost like embarrassed that they don't speak Taiwanese like mm. because and not, not not their fault just you know with this complicated history and stuff that has happened mm-hmm. where, it, where that, that is now in this situation mm-hmm. but it's it is um rare to find young people who do speak Taiwanese so right right good for yeah you. <laughs> I, was, I feel like I was lucky to be able to you know grow up with my grandma and mm. you know keep that like Taiwanese like tradition yeah, yeah. so is it your grandma a close figure in your life yes she's yeah. like one of my biggest role models <laughs> yeah so she must have been very proud when you won, <laughs> yeah um, the Miss Taiwanese America yeah mm. yeah nice and let's go through the actual process mm-hmm. of the pageant. Tell, yeah. us, tell us where where does it start? What's the initial steps? So one of the initial steps is like the online like application. Um, and I think, I believe that starts, that was like in May, early or June, June, May-ish. Um, and then a, like two weeks later, you, you know, you get, if you like pass that like the online application you get invited for an interview and so that i believe that was actually in may that one's <laughs> in may and then after the interview then you'll in a, a, another week later you get notified if you're a, like a finalist mm-hmm. and so it's after you're a finalist that you go through this seven to eight week training program mm-hmm. yeah and what's so, involved in that yeah program. it's pretty intense actually yeah. um so it's every saturday and sunday for about like six to eight hours but it seems like a lot but you do learn a lot in those like seven to eight weeks you learn of course like the normal you know pageant stuff like catwalks you know dance makeup lessons but you also learn a lot about you know taiwanese like history um, our culture um, and you really get to bond with like you know the other um, like girls in the in the training program mm-hmm. as well. Was there anything that surprised you oh that that yeah anything that surprised you during that process of maybe learning about uh, your Taiwanese culture or history that you had no idea about before? Um, well I actually had no idea of ta- <laughs> like Taiwanese history mm-hmm. like I had c- I really didn't really have like any knowledge of it before so all of it was actually so insightful because through it I learned actually like how like resilient like the Taiwanese you know people are and how we continue to persevere to you know fight for identity and so that was something that made me feel you know even prouder to be Taiwanese American. Mm, Yeah yeah. a really good point because I did like East Asian studies at uni and even with that it was very dominated on like China and like Chinese history and stuff and um I found it so when I got the chance to come to Taiwan like I found it so interesting and super lucky to learn about Taiwan's history and culture because right. it is really unique. Yeah, it is mm-hmm. really unique. Yeah. And then so we've got the eight weeks of mm-hmm. the of the training. Right. Um what what are you feeling during that time? Um 
It was a lot. I was very surprised because you think two months is like a long time, but it yeah. actually passes by so quick. Um, and there's a lot to like manage within those two months. Um, and so I guess like during those, like the training period, um, it was a lot of just like continuing to learn more about myself. Mm. Um, and, you know, I continue to like learn more, not only about myself, but of course, like Taiwanese, you know, my Taiwanese heritage. Um, and that also helped with that journey of like self discovery. Mm. It just felt, it just felt very quick, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. 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 And then as it got closer and closer to pageant day, I guess more like built up like anxiety. <laughs> so you would have been 18 at that time? Yeah. I was okay. 18. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, I would be getting super nervous, <laughs> I think, by the end of it. Yeah. Um, and what about the other people, the other contestants that were also in this process? Did you make up, did you end up becoming like quite close with mm-hmm. the other girls? Yeah. And so, because there really is not like a like hard like age limit Mm. so the youngest one was actually like 16 i think the oldest being 32 30s Mm -hmm. um and so because of the wide like age difference it didn't really feel like (laughs) we were like competing with each other right it was more like you know like jie jie mei mei type of like environment yeah um which was really nice yeah (laughs) because we were like for the people younger than me, I would treat them like like my sister. Mm. People older t- with like than me, they would like treat me like I was their younger yeah. sister. So it was like constantly we were constantly helping each other. Awesome. And what would what were some of their reasons for competing in it? Was it a similar like wanting to kind of get yeah. in touch with their like mm-hmm. Taiwanese roots as well? Yeah, it was mostly like similar, like being able to meet you know more Taiwanese people. Um, and getting more in touch with our Taiwanese roots, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the day of the pageant, mm-hmm. how, how, what's the process there? Yeah, so for, so in terms of like the categories, I guess I think there are like five main categories. So one is before the pageant day, we have a personal interview where um, we have like a panel of judges um, and they ask us like a bunch of like intensive like questions. <laughs> what, what, what were some of the examples? Can you remember? Um, some of the examples. Uh, I think they asked us like you know like the normal question like what it means to us to to be Taiwanese American. Why we think we deserve this role. Mm. Um, what would we do during our term as Miss Taiwanese American? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that I believe that was like twenty percent of our score. And then the rest is like pageant night. So on pageant night, we have the first category is like a group dance. I think that's like five percent. So you have to be a dancer. Um, <laughs> like, is there anyone who can't I, I was. I'm not a dancer personally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the farthest thing from a dancer. But um, during every like training, mm. every like weekend, we had dance lessons. So okay, nice. luckily, so yeah, training, <laughs> yeah, yeah, luckily. Um, and then during the week, we also had some online like Zoom classes. Mm. Um, and so even though I'm not a dancer, <laughs> like practicing every weekend definitely helped. Mm. Yeah. So that was there was like a group dance. Um, and then afterwards, we had the self um, introduction. Um, and I didn't mention this, but during training period, we had a like self presentation class that was actually very helpful. Mm. Like that was actually a whole learning journey for me in itself, right. because you know for the self introduction introduction naturally I feel like a lot of people would think it's very important to showcase you know just your successes and all the, your achievements in life. And so initially when we're um, practicing in front of like the the like the class that's sort of what I did. I was like, oh, I got to stay for blah, blah, blah. Those are my achievements. But, you know, at the end of the, after I finished practicing, the instructor was basically just told me like, you know, all of this is great, but all I know about you is that, you know, you're an overachiever. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's not what I want to, that's not the message I want to portray because even though, you know, I might come off of, come off like that, I've also gone through my fair share of challenges and I want to you know be able to come off as like you know also human i want people Mm -hmm. to be able to like you know relate to me as well Mm -hmm. um and so you know through that whole experience i learned that you know 
it's very important to you know not only talk about your successes but it's also important to show your vulnerability and your weaknesses as well yeah so that was one another category like self-introduction so your heart was very back to the those you know talking about your vulnerabilities yeah uh maybe like weaknesses or whatever how did you then moving forward when it came to your self-introduction on the actual day how did you include those elements right um so for me i actually used to be a very introverted kind of person Mm. um i was very very shy before (laughs) um i'm sure a lot of people (laughs) will find that surprising yeah um i couldn't even like speak in front of like five people i feel like um (laughs) (laughs) yeah so and one of the main reasons i feel like I was like that was because when I was younger, I was bullied for my Asian American identity. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to play actually like, a, it's called like the Chinese zither, like guzen. And like, you know, a lot of people would, you know, make, you know, really like, mean jokes about it, mm-hmm. say that it's like not cool, blah, blah. Um, and so because of that, it actually, because of being discriminated for my, ta- my Asian American identity, I was sort of silenced. Mm-hmm. And... Um, as I continued to like grow up, I realized that, you know, I didn't want to continue to, you know, not be able to use my voice and not be able to stand up for myself. Mm. Um, and so that was something I really wanted to show to the audience as well, because I'm sure a lot of us have like also gone through, you know, the same experience as well. Mm. Um, and so that was sort of how I approached like the self-introduction moving forward. Yeah, yeah. no, I think a lot of, like you said, a lot of people would have resonated with that. So right. I think it's great that you kind of did touch on that. Yeah. And then I know also talent is the talent bit, right? Mm. That's part of it. What did you do for yeah. your talent thing? So for my talent show, I built a robot wow yeah that's so cool <laughs> yeah so originally this was actually a really difficult like section for me uh-huh. because i really wanted to show that i was like a woman in stem i thought that was like you know what made me like unique and something i really wanted to you know showcase mm-hmm. um but it was really difficult because originally i built like a small robot it was probably like this big mm-hmm. um in one of the checkpoints that we had for a talent show um basically the mentors told me that it was too small no one wanted to see you build a mini <laughs> robot in like front of the audience no one can understand or see what you're even doing right. so from then on i they told me to build like a big like human-sized robot um wow. and so that was pretty difficult but at the end of the day i feel like it was totally worth it yeah uh, yeah wow how, and, like how, how does that work <laughs> um how does what work like how did you make a robot <laughs> yeah so is it in, in like a in do you have to do it in the time slot are you like doing it in front of the audience no no no. so i could not build in front of the audience <laughs> i was so gonna say i, I was pre-built like, it okay. i pre-built it and okay. then i made like a mini 30 to 40 second like video of me making it oh, yeah no, yeah and then it, for the actual like day of the pageant i introduced my robot and said oh you know this is the robot i built Gave did he have a name you know, mta bot mta because <laughs> miss taiwanese american oh, and then mta bot yeah <laughs> um so yeah for the talent show i introduced my robot showed the video and then i did a catwalk around like the stage with mm. my robot yeah iconic <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> i love it and um when you you know after the the pageant's over and you were crowned does it all end there Mm-mm. no that's actually where the journey begins right, okay. so, yeah so after the pageant night we have all, many like events and engagements um like from then on a lot of it um it could be like self-initiated and then also you know we have some like main events like um like taiwan's independence day 1010 Mm -hmm. um where we had like a huge like fundraiser um we recently had like the like the fourth of july like huntington beach parade that was really fun oh yeah Yeah, i saw i saw um, pictures of that yeah so it was a lot of the events we get to meet a lot of like you know a lot of accomplished people in you know the taiwanese american community um one of the main highlights for me personally was when president Tsai visited los angeles and i was able to be not only meet her but also be the mc for the presidential banquet so yeah that's amazing. that was a highlight yeah <laughs> is that because i guess that hasn't how did that role come about 
Um, so one like the like chairperson of Taiwan Center mm-hmm. um told me about it, and it was sort of like a long like application oh, process. Yeah. Wow. So congratulations. Thank yeah, you. I did. It was such an honor. <laughs> yeah, I saw pics of you and then yeah. presents. And I was like, wow, that's very cool. Yeah. I other than the events and stuff, is there a lot of interaction with the Taiwanese American community as your role, and is the role then is it is it a year long role until the next um, Miss Taiwanese American is crowned? Yeah, it is a year long mm-hmm. like role. Mm-hmm. And what's the Taiwanese American community like? How would you describe it? Mm-hmm. So, I think that's a, like an interesting question to me because I think a lot of like I guess mainstream really focuses on Taiwan being like almost like a political like pawn, right? Um, focusing a lot of like really talk about Taiwan in the perspective of in the perspective of like you know China mm. um the US sort of always being like thrown around yes. um but i don't think a lot of like taiwanese american voices and what we think are, like our perspective is actually heard mm. um and so in terms of like the taiwanese american community um i feel like a lot of us a lot of us just, I think, really just want our voices to also to be, you know, heard and, um, like, not only, like, in the perspective of always, so just, like, in the political sense, mm. but also just, like, um, be more, like, in the mainstream as well. Right. So, yeah. um, from the people that you've spoken to, what would you say, like, uh, what do people think, like, the Taiwanese American community, what are people within amongst that thinking about the like you said the you know how the geopolitical situation is dominating everything what are their thoughts on on that Mm -hmm. yeah well i can't speak for like ever the entire community but um i think a lot of us you know we have a very strong like cultural like pride Mm. um and so a lot of us just want mainly like in the for the Taiwanese American community we just want to continue to see you know of course the U.S. continue to be an ally to Taiwan Mm -hmm. no one wants to see Taiwan go especially not us Mm -hmm. um and so that's mainly I feel like what you know we we believe in Mm -hmm. yeah and you spoke about how uh, meeting President Tsai and being the MC of of the event at the banquet that was that was a big highlight Mm -hmm. for you have there ever, have there been other um, big highlights during your journey as Miss Taiwanese American? Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> definitely, present Tai was one of the main ones, just because that day it was just like there were so many people mm-hmm. there. There were also, of course, there were protesters there as well. Um, but at the same time, there were a lot of Taiwanese Americans, like you know, shouting, and then it was just like a lot of like it really felt like a unity. Um, and I felt we ha- we also had to wait for hours for President Tsai right. to come, and so also I feel like like our patience and like standing there was also like almost sort of like um like our a symbol of you know our willingness and you know unwavering support to you know continue to like foster our identity here in the United States despite despite us being like so far away from Taiwan. Um, and I feel like another main event, I also said like the 4th of July was a main another mm-hmm. main one just because um, it really felt like we we're being included in like the mainstream and something while I was on the float, you know, a lot of people, I saw a lot of like thousands and thousands of people being like, oh, go Taiwan, stay yeah. safe, Taiwan. Mm-hmm. And so when I heard that, it really felt like, you know, people did understand why it's so important for us to keep you know our identity and you know what's happening in the news and so that was something that made me feel like okay all this all this is worth it Mm. yeah we'll talk more about your growing up as a Taiwanese American in a sec Uh now just one last question relating to um beauty pageants and stuff they have faced criticisms and controversy around like beauty standards and maybe um diversity as well and a lot of them a lot of people see it as being more focused on appearance how would you respond to those who might question whether um beauty pageants are relevant in today's society Mm -hmm. so one of my main goals have actually of being like in being miss taiwanese americans have been has been to sort of break that like 
stigma yep. behind beauty pageants um, because I think nowadays um, a lot of beauty pageants are slowly evolving to becoming less about external beauty but more about you know showcasing that women you know can be not only strong but also intelligent um, and intelligent like leaders um, and also beautiful at the same time um, and so I think for me, going through Miss Taiwanese American has really taught me, like, has really allowed me to go through this, like, journey of, like, self-discovery. Because when you're in a pageant, you can't really, you can't really, like, pretend to be, like, someone else. You know, you have to really be able to advocate for yourself. Um, and, like, through this entire, like, journey, I was, I feel like I've been able to, you know, not only be more in touch with my Taiwanese American identity, but of course, you know, gain a deeper understanding of who I am. What was the most significant thing then that you learned about yourself from the whole journey, would you say? Um, from, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Probably perseverance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, explain, explain more about that. Why, why perseverance? Um, it's just because, I guess, throughout, like, this entire journey it's like constantly you have to continue to like work on yourself be willing to continue to like self-improve um and all of that so despite facing a lot of challenges I was continuing to get up and you know be able to get back on my feet and you know be my own advocate and cheerleader yeah mm-hmm. and let's talk then about your experience growing up as a Taiwanese American um, in the US and uh, you you touched upon the bullying that you faced mm-hmm. um what in general was it like for you growing up in the US I don't think my experience was the worst mm-hmm. it could be but like I don't think it was like that at all like at all I there was a pretty like I said it was pretty big like Taiwanese population in the US or at least where I'm from like in Los Angeles um and so growing up I wasn't really like harshly criticized about my Taiwanese American identity, but more about like my Asian American identity. Even though um, there are a lot of, I feel like, like, you know, there's a lot of like, you know, there's like Chinatown, Jap- Japanese town, like Koreatown. Um, so there's a lot of like Asian, I guess, like areas. But at the same time, I still feel like a lot of people still don't really recognize Taiwanese as mm. even you know, an uh, independent country. Like, I guess people don't, they're, uh, they unintentionally think, like, Taiwan is, like, n- Taiwan is part of, like, China. Right. Yeah. And so, I, like I said, I had a friend recently who was like, oh, isn't it, like, the same thing? And I don't think she had any bad intentions or anything, but I had it, like, explained to her. So it's sort of been, sometimes it can be frustrating, but at the same time, I don't think people intentionally, you know, want to like assume that so right. it's important to it's almost, you know, I guess continue explaining from yeah a place of not knowing slash ignorance yeah some, yeah exactly yeah. so you have to continue to like you know explain yourself yeah. right what does it mean to you then to be a Taiwanese American yeah for me being Taiwanese American sort of means being that bridge between you know time ta- my Taiwanese identity and of course my experiences in, I was about to say here in the United States, but I'm not in, I'm not in the United States right now. Um, my being the bridge between my Taiwanese heritage and my American like experiences, and continuing to be, you know, an advocate for Taiwan. Yeah, continue to to build that bridge and make the connection like better. Now, as a representative of the Taiwanese American community, what message would you like to convey to young individuals? who are navigating their multicultural identities. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything I learned is that like your definition of like identity, your own definition of identity is always changing. It's always evolving and no one can really determine that for a new, no one can ever like determine that for you except for yourself. (laughs) Um, And so, um, a message that I would like to, I guess, share is just that, you know, it's okay to sometimes feel like, you know, you to not to be unsure about your identity or like where you even belong, because 
each of us were ultimately different and my defin even my definition of what it means to be Taiwanese American can be completely different from other Taiwanese Americans living in the United States. And mm -hmm. so um, all of our like definitions may be like different and it's ultimately up for you know yourself to determine that. Mm -hmm. So now again we're going back into the politics. Uh -huh. What are your hopes for Taiwan US relations? Ultimately, of course, I hope that, you know, United States can continue to be like a huge ally of Taiwan, you know, whether it's politically, you know, economically or even like militarily. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I think, you know, the United States is like a really important Ty ally of Taiwan. And so I hope that, you know, we can continue to build that like relationship. And I think it's also really important for us as like Taiwanese Americans to continue to, you know, speak up for ourselves. Because like I said before, if we don't, then nobody else will. Mm -hmm. um, and so I hope that our like, I can definitely see that the relationship is getting better. But um I hope to see, like, you know, the United States continue just to support Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And some people may say that uh, the US isn't coming from a place of wanting to generally, like, help and support Taiwan. They think they're coming from a self-interested place in the power balance between US and China. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about this? Yeah, I mean, I definitely understand how it can be, like, a difficult, like, position to be in. Um... But I ultimately, I think that it's really important for the United States to ultimately recognize Taiwan as an independent country, which it has yet to do. Last question, we're finishing up with our time here. How do you envision your role as um, Taiwanese American ambassador moving forward? Do you, what are your plans and aspirations for the future? Yeah, so even though my term is coming to an end, Sadly, yeah. yes, very <laughs> unfortunately, um, that doesn't mean like my work is at, at all. Um, so in the future, I hope to continue to, you know, continue to advocate for Taiwanese Americans and continue to be sort of like an ambassador for our community. And like this pageant has truly been something that like completely changed my life. It, you know, I was able to go through this journey of self-discovery and gain a better understanding of my Taiwanese American heritage and so in a way I also want to you know pay back to the pageant as well so I hope to also inspire you know other young ladies who are going through this similar journey of self-discovery and be able also sort of also inspire them to like be able to go through this journey of like empowerment and ultimately reach that point as well. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you so much. And if people want to um, check out, you know, what, you, what you're up to or where can they look online? Yeah, so you can follow me um, on Instagram. Um, my username is at Tiffany A. Chang. Mm -hmm. Okay, amazing. Well, thank yeah. you again. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> and thank you for listening to Hot Stuff. See you next week. Bye.